It's Linda Cobb, and you're talking dirty with the queen of clean. Do you have dirt, stink, mess, cleaning frustration? Do you dread cleaning? If so, boy, are you in the right place. Cleaning may never be your personal joy, but I can show you how to clean smarter, not harder, and get out of the house faster. So let's jump right in and get started. It's Linda Cobb, and you are talking dirty with the queen of clean. On today's show, you and I are going to go wall to wall. We're going to talk about all those nasty, nasty marks that get on your walls and how to easily remove them. I'm talking things like crayon and ink and markers. You know the messes you get, especially when you have kids. But before we get started, I want to remind you about my private page on Facebook, Queen of Clean Insiders. I'm giving you my personal invitation to join us. It's a private group, a little community, if you will. We talk dirty to each other all through the week. You can ask me questions. I might ask you questions. You can share great cleaning solutions with me. And believe me, I have learned a lot from you guys. We're going to have contests. We're going to have giveaways. I'll be asking you to help me test some products. And I hope you will recommend products to me that I should test and talk about. So guys, go to Facebook and join me on Queen of Clean Insiders. Now, let's get going on today's show. You know, when you want to remove a mark from the wall, the first thing you want to try to do is erase the marks on the wall. And so what I use for that is an old fashioned art gum eraser. And I keep it on hand just for that so it's never dirty. You can pick those up at places like craft stores. Um, Michael's actually has them. You can probably even find them on Amazon. But they're great to have around the house. And when you get a mark, before you touch it with anything else, Try erasing it away. Now, if you have kids, I know your walls have substituted for paper. So if you have crayon on your walls, there's a really easy way to remove it. You're going to spray some WD-40 lubricant on a paper towel. You're going to wipe over that crayon mark and it will literally disappear. When you're done, follow up with a soft cloth and a solution of hot water and a little dishwashing liquid. Wash it in a circular motion, rinse, and let it dry. Now, what about ink and marker? To remove ink or magic marker, you can use hairspray. The cheaper, the better, because it has more alcohol in it. Or you can use rubbing alcohol. Or for really tough spots, you can use denatured alcohol, which you buy at places like home centers, hardware stores, things like that. Now. If you're using a strong alcohol, like we've been using lately to disinfect, make sure you test it in an inconspicuous spot first and make sure that it doesn't take any paint off your wall. And all you're going to do is rub that on gently, blot it on first, if you will, and then rinse it when you're done. That generally will take those marks off. Now, if you have magic marker on stained kitchen cabinets, and this is my secret trick. You can rub that permanent marker, and I do mean a Sharpie, with a dollar bill. Yes, a dollar bill. It needs to be a dollar bill because it's the fiber that they use to make the dollar bill that will take it off. I had a TV anchor do that on her kitchen cupboards when her triplets wrote their names all over her cherry cabinets and it took it right off. So that's a dollar bill on your, your varnished or your stained cabinets. It'll do a great job. Now let's talk about some great wall washing solutions. Um, the first one is one gallon of warm water, one half cup of ammonia, and one quarter cup of white vinegar, and one quarter cup of washing soda. Now, remember, washing soda is found in the laundry aisle. It is not baking soda. Now, you're going to add all of that together, and you'll start at the bottom of the wall always and work your way up. That way, you never get dirty runs coming down the wall. It's an easy solution to use, and when you're doing it, you know, wash one wall at a time. Never stop in the middle. And if you use this kind of a solution, you never have to rinse. Now, another solution you can use is simply one gallon of warm water, one cup of ammonia, and one teaspoon of dishwashing liquid. So it's one gallon of warm water, one cup, 
of ammonia, and one teaspoon of mild dishwashing liquid. For really professional results, rinse the walls with clear water after washing with either of these solutions. But believe me, you don't have to do it. It's going to be fine. Now, there's a great all-purpose cleaner that you can make up too. It's seven cups of warm water, one half cup of baking soda, and one half cup of clear ammonia. You're going to combine the ammonia, the baking soda, and the one cup of warm water in a gallon jug. Cap it and shake it thoroughly so that it's mixed well. Then you'll add the remaining water and label the container. To use it, you're going to pour one half cup of this mixture into one and a half gallons of hot water. You can use this on delicate surfaces like wallpaper even, as long as you test it in an inconspicuous spot first. So again, it's seven cups of warm water, one half cup of baking soda, one half cup of clear ammonia. And you're going to combine that together with one cup of the warm water. You're going to put it in a half gallon jug, cap it and shake it really, really well to get it mixed, then add the rest of the water. And to use, it's one half cup of that special mixture to one and a half gallons of hot water. And you can use this on paneling too. And I always suggest you test everything in an inconspicuous spot first. Now, once you've washed a wall, you don't have to go back and rinse it if you don't want to, as long as you keep your solution clean. So if you're washing walls, particularly maybe you moved into a house and, and the walls are looking kind of nasty, you'll want to make sure that you wash them with clean solution every time. Don't let it get dirty and keep washing with it. And whatever you do, don't stop when you start on a wall. You'll get what's called wave marks and you'll see where you stopped washing and where you started again. Now, what about keeping your walls clean? You know, I use a microfiber mop and I actually mop down my wall using that microfiber mop head dry. It takes off all the lint and all the crud. And if you haven't done this, you really have to try it. It's amazing what is hanging on your walls that you don't even realize. And particularly in your bedroom when you're sleeping at night, if you have kids with allergies, make sure you're dusting down those walls and nothing works better than a microfiber mop head. And I use it right on the mop. And if you have a telescoping head, it can reach a long ways up and you can do the walls quickly and easily. I do my bedroom in just a matter of 10 minutes. So give that a try. Now, let's talk a little bit about wallpaper because wallpaper is so popular now. And if you get grease spots on wallpaper, it can really be a trial. So this is something you can do easily. You make a paste of cornstarch and water. You're going to apply it to the grease spot and you're going to let it dry. So what I do when I put it on is I make the paste so that it will stick to the wall and I'll pat it onto that. You let that dry well, and when you're done, you come back and you brush it or vacuum it off. You can apply a double fold of brown paper. It's a grocery bag will work well for that, just a regular brown paper bag. The only thing you never do is use the side that has the writing on it. So you're going to apply a double fold of brown paper to the wall and you're going to press over the grease spot with a warm iron. Now it's a warm iron, not hot. It might require a couple of efforts, but this method works really, really well. And it will also work if you splash candle wax on your wallpaper. So give those things a try. And as always, I always tell you, test in an inconspicuous spot first, because I'm not at your house, so I can't see what you're using the cleaning method on. Now, if you get crayon on wallpaper, what can you do? Well, you can rub it lightly with a dry, soap-filled steel wool pad. Boy, say that twice fast. What that will do is it will gently remove that crayon. Now, you do not wet that SOS pad, nor do you wet the wallpaper. You can also try rubbing with a little baking soda on a damp cloth. This will work in most cases. 
Now, for smudges, marks, and mystery stains, you know the ones, I don't know how it got there, I didn't do it, you again, you can erase it with an art gum eraser. I have an art gum eraser on hand all the time just for that. I mean, obviously, we're not erasing pencil much anymore. So if you keep that eraser handy, any kind of mark that you get, you can't hurt it. Just go in and give that a try. You can even use it on non-washable papers. It does a great job. Now, another thing you can do is you can um, rub a scrunched up piece of white bread over the marks. Now, it has to be white bread. But you roll that up in a ball and rub it over those marks, and it does a great job removing them. You want to rub gently and repeat it a few times. You can also use a soot and dirt removal sponge. Now, you buy these at hardware stores, home centers. You can buy them on Amazon. And it looks like a big brick eraser. It is used dry. And you rub it over any surface to remove marks. And it will do no damage on any surface. So keep one on hand. And again, you can buy that in home centers, hardware stores, even Amazon. It's a soot and dirt removal sponge. Now, if you want to wash your wallpaper, I suggest that you use a really mild solution. Even just a couple of drops of liquid dish soap and a gallon of warm water will work. And again, start at the bottom and work your way up. Now, for cloth wall coverings, obviously, you can't wash those. And they're getting more popular again. You're seeing some of those grass-type coverings or even upholstery fabrics on walls. So to clean those type of things, including burlap or cloth wall coverings, vacuum with your soft duster brush on the vacuum and do this regularly to maintain it. And if you don't want to have marks all over it, never put this kind of fabric on the walls when you have kids. It is harder to clean and you want to use it in a room that is more for show than for hard use. Now for wood paneling, we want to do the same thing that we do for wood floor cleaning. You can use a mixture of dark black tea and mix it about four or five bags in some hot water. Let it brew and when it's done and it's just lukewarm, you can wash down that wood. It does a great job on that. The tannin will put a beautiful, beautiful shine on it. You know, when I was doing a radio show on KEZ many years ago, I had a woman call up and ask me how to remove globber from her walls. And I was like, globber? And she said it was on the walls, the floors, the cabinets, pretty much everywhere. Well, do I have to tell you that the host and I were at a loss for what globber was? So with some hesitation and a finger on the cut button, I can tell you that, I asked. The answer it's a combination of slobber and guck that bulldogs and pugs seem to get all over the place as they shake their heads from side to side. It's not a pretty picture, but it is easily solved. Make a lather of Fells naphtha bar soap. On a light colored rag, you will wash that in in a circular motion and rinse. That will take that globber or slobber or whatever you want to call it off. Now, if you have animals that are spraying at your house, you can clean the wall with that same thing. But I highly recommend that you use a good deodorizing product after that to get the smell out. You can use spray on ones. You can use dry ones. Nature's Miracle makes some good ones. I don't have one in particular that I suggest, but... Pick something up at your favorite pet store or on Amazon, and that'll do a great job for you. Hey, guys, before I go, if you have a question, if you have a solution, if you have an idea for a podcast, please get with me at ask at queenofclean.com. That's ask at queenofclean.com. And I'll be happy to try to answer your questions on the podcast. And as always, thanks for talking dirty with the Queen of Clean.